and in this presentation I'm gonna go through the technical due diligence presentation and maybe some of the use cases that you might be having in your company so let's get started with it so this is the reason why you might want to do this here you see a couple of screw-ups that some companies have uh, done and that could have been avoided if they had good operational procedures and uh, good data compliance good regulations and uh, safe ways of operating and working proactively with information security and in this presentation what I'm hoping for is to show you maybe some of the use cases that you might be having where you want to do this uh, either you might want to do internal auditing to improve uh, maybe because of regulatory requirements or it could be that you're looking into being uh, bought up by a bigger company or maybe you're doing an acquisition of some other company and you want to do this uh, review on them or it could also be that maybe you're preparing for an investment round and so you want to be prepared for the uh, type of due diligences that you will be exposed to from the investors, etc. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to do this. Um, and also, I think it goes well in hand together with doing a pen test that either maybe you have someone you're working with there. I don't do the pen test, but I have good partners that I can connect you to if you're interested in that. And I think that a lot of companies spend a lot of money on doing the pen tests, which are notoriously expensive, but maybe they don't look into qualitatively how they're working with their uh, technical operations primarily, and also compliance, of course, and stuff like that. So this review and audit is more in, in line with that, where I can help you putting together a report that I'm going to show you in a, a template example of how it can look, the report so that you have actionable insights into your organization and i'm basing it on the on the technical due diligences that i have done on other company but also being exposed to as part of being a cto at the medtech company and as you can imagine in the medtech industry is quite there's quite a lot of regulations and uh, compliance requirements so i'm relying on that expertise and you can check my credentials on linkedin if you want to know more in detail what, what my credentials are um, so let's get started with it. If we look at the use case uh, internal auditing, I would recommend that we do this loop, yearly loop, uh, where we start with the discovery. We, uh, we take a look at uh, the organization from qualitative interviews and uh, trying to deep drill into the organization. I always find stuff, just so you know, I will find stuff that are uh, you know, depending on your maturity of the company, it, it can vary the maturity wise. And then I always lay, leave uh, recommendations. But the, the plan is to move primarily here in this phase from the unknown unknowns to the known unknowns at least. So uh, discovery basically. And from that we take the mitigations. This is where you do the heavy lifting. And I can help you with some, some contacts if you need that as well. And then after that we do a verification maybe at the end of the year to verify that you have solved some of the milestones and goals that we set out to solve. And then we can do a new phase of discovery uh, looping around for the next year. So let's see why you would want to do this. What, what you will get from me is a snapshot of the organizational technical capabilities and risks. Uh, I will give you clear actions that you can make improvements on the organization. Um, of course, it's confidential uh, and you will get a detailed recommendations uh, that are easy to read and also an executive summary for the suits so that uh, you guys know what, um, what is up with the organization. Um, some of it will be subjective, of course, but I will mark very clearly where, where it is more subjective. So you know that. Um, and. Uh, we will go through each finding and then we'll do an estimation of the probability and the impact of that. Uh, recommendations on the actions that I suggest that you take. And uh, I also have some additional material that is going to give you like a bump head start uh, where you're just like up to date with some of the templates that I have for certain type of documents. And as I said, executive summary that you can share internally as you see see fit and uh, I can also do a presentation uh, if you want that. So first is about establishing the baseline. I will take a look at your technical uh, security measures that you're working with, the organizational security measures um, and it will be based on ISO 27001 series if we talk about information security 
operational power and this where I mean is like are you operating in a in a way where you can actually deliver on the roadmap that you do or are you doing some inefficiency maybe you're not using modern software development maybe you're using some bottleneck somewhere that I can help you get unstuck with and also very basic data compliance it's not a compliance review per se but but uh, there, there. Sometimes there's some some low hanging fruit with the data compliance. Uh, if it's a med tech company specifically, I might know a bit more on that. But also things like basic GDPR handling in your service and, and things like that. So it's mostly about GDPR. Um, so then, the, from from that report, you will get a report, and then we move over to the risk mitigation. And this is basically the majority of the year where you do all the heavy lifting, where you apply the suggested solutions that I have given to you, hopefully. Uh, hopefully you apply them, but it's up to you entirely, of course. Uh, we have a document of accepted risks, maybe. Maybe we improve the operational power. And of course, I'm available for further questions in this phase if you want me to clarify on some of the stuff. And I am working with Assured AB, I think they're a great pen test company, but uh, there, there are others and I can connect you with other type of uh, advisory roles, financial and GDPR, etc. Upon demand, if, if you want that, then we can extend on that, of course. Um, I don't want to go in as a consultant here and apply uh, the fixes. This, I think, is better if you do it because you know your organization. But uh, in case you need consultants to help sort out maybe some of the more detailed stuff I can connect you with someone if I'm not able to do it myself and then I do the verification test at the end of the year or whenever the phase loops around uh, here we got a re verification report with current statuses an executive summary for the non-technical personnel and this is just a shorter like a uh, just a shorter verification going through the list that we set out previously and just have you done this 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 uh, yes or no basically and then we set new goals, moving on over to the next phase of the discovery. Um, of course, if you're doing this on a third party, it doesn't make sense to loop it around. Maybe you just have, want to have like a snapshot before the acquisition, for example, or before the investment. Um, so there will be no looping in that case. But maybe, and this is something to think about, if you're doing an acquisition, uh, it's very good to have this report because it beca can become leverage later in the negotiations of the price. So if you have this report, you're going to be able to say to the party that you're acquiring that, by the way, these red flags, you should fix them. Otherwise, the price will not be what we initially set out. Uh, so that can be a great leverage in those type of discussions. This is my pricing list here. Uh, it's in SEC and uh, plus VAT, of course, and um, I think it's very good to compare this to a pen test. So if you look at these prices, you'll see that it's significantly cheaper than doing a pen test. And the reason why it is, uh, it's because if you look at, oh, and the reason why it's good that it is cheaper is that I think personally that this type of report is going to give you more to work with than a pen test will. Because a pen test is just going to be like a one-time snapshot where you're like, depending on where they look, it's usually very specific. It's like, have a look at this very like detailed part of our systems because you suspect that there might be nas some nasty stuff there. But it's not holistic. So I think that combination of a pen test and doing this thing is going to be very good. And if you need to prioritize and you cannot get away with compliantory, and if you can't get away with not doing a pen test, I think you should prioritize this thing because it's going to give you more to work with. Um, risk mitigation, uh, yeah, as I said, you do you do this thing and if you need any extended work, I, I do have an hourly fee here, which is quite expensive, so you're probably cheaper off taking in some software developer for a cheaper price. But there might be CTO work that you, it's going to be hard for you to find. Maybe you need to write some policies or I don't know. I can, I can write together some policies for you that are specific to your organization. Uh, I generally don't want to spend any uh, large amount of hours here. But, uh, but I can do it if, if uh, we believe that that's the most efficient way to do it. So this is my price list. And uh, that's all on my presentation. If you have any further questions, you can contact me, reach, reach out to me on the email that is provided. 
and um, and, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, and I'll you know we can we we can discuss. Uh, I'm I'm reachable over email, or you can uh, check out my LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, I, I I think you should do that. Check out my LinkedIn. It should be fairly updated, and you can see my credentials there, what I have been working with before, and what I'm relying my expertise on. So uh, so you know who you're getting here. But otherwise, feel free to reach out, and and I'll try to answer as soon as possible. That's everything for me. Thanks.